On the previous video, I told you about dynamic values. Let me show you a better way to handle things that change in the template. For that, I'll introduce you to the second markup core API, the state. We will have here the code from dynamic values video, and I'll simplify it while showing you the state handling. The first thing I'll do is import state and change this count to be a state where I'll initialize it to zero. State returns an array of three functions. Let me show you the first two, which are the state getter and setter functions. I don't need to return the count from the function. The count here is a function, so I can just use it directly in the template. Now inside our handle click function, I'll use the set count function. And when you use the state, you don't need to call the update method. To update a value, I can call the setter function with a new value or provide it a callback function, which gets called with the current value. And inside I can perform any associated logic and return a new value. As a matter of fact, I'll move this condition inside the set of callback. The code is now a lot simpler and easier to understand. If we check this in the browser, we will have the same effect. The DOM is only updated up to when count is uh, equals to five. So how different this is? With dynamic values, whenever you call the update method, markup checks all injected values and check if their values change by doing a shallow comparison and then decide whether to update the DOM. With state, markup only checks the state we are updating. And the way it does it is due to the fact that when we add the counter getter in the template, markup template is subscribing to its value and all the subscriptions are handled behind the scenes without your intervention. This only happens if you use the state getter directly in the template or pass it to a helper that accepts states. We will learn more about helpers later. You can also subscribe to a state yourself. I can pass a function as a second argument to the state where I'll log the count value. In the browser, I can see that my function is called for every update, even when the value did not change at all. Now, the way to unsubscribe is by using the third function returned by the state, which I can then call here inside my change handler. Now in the browser, I can see it only gets called once. Now to further show you that only the place where the state is used gets handled on change, I'll add a function here in the template where I'll double the count value to update it. This is what is called a side effect. One state changes and you can react to it in the template to render something related. If we tried this in the browser, only the above count changes. This is because the template sees the state getter when you inject it directly. But the second function, the template does not know what's going on inside. Also, when I update the state, the template only responds to the where the state was used, nowhere else. So how do you perform side effects then? We will learn more about helpers later, but for now, let me introduce you to the effect helper. All you need to do is call it with the comma separated list of state getters. And as a last argument, you can provide your side effect action. In this case, a function that doubles the count and returns the value. The state getters you provide needs to be something your side effect action depends on, if I wasn't clear. Now, if I try this in the browser, we see the double count value change whenever count changes as well. Helpers only exist to help you handle state values and they can be used directly in the template or not you can look at them as just reactive functions. Play around with this example to have a feel of things and I'll tell you more about helpers later.